Welcome back to the 3D Racer tutorial series. Um, today we're going to be doing uh, user interface uh, stuff, particularly with lap times, making it so that we can record ourselves and get around the lap, uh, and then that means having a start slash finish line. Uh, and from there we can start doing best times and um, you know keeping up with how quickly we get around the track. So let's go ahead and get started. Over here in the hierarchy, I'm going to add a UI text, TextMess Pro. If you don't have it logged uh, or downloaded, like I, I do not, you're going to hit Import TMP Essentials. Give it a second. We won't need the examples and extras right now. So I'll click out of this. So now it's given us a canvas and a text object. Uh, I'm going to call this text object, give it the name of lap timer, like this. And I'm going to go ahead and find that here in the scene. I'm going to switch to 2D, might make it easier for me to see. I would suggest that on your game panel, make sure that your 16 by 9 is set so that we have um, you know, the same scaling with screen size. And actually on Canvas, I'm going to make sure that it says that. So UI scale mode change that with scale with screen size right here awesome so back in your scene take your lap timer and it's going to be up here in the upper right hand corner so you know, I'm just going to use the rectangle transform here so I click on this hit option hold it down and then I'm going to click this one in the upper right hand corner that'll put it there uh, roughly um, that looks okay. Let's, we might play with it and move it down some. That part of this is going to be kind of fiddling with that to some degree. Uh, let's change the text to say, and we'll scroll down in the inspector some. Yeah, this is really high. Move that back down. Okay. I'm going to scroll that text to say, lap time. Hmm. It's kind of big if I were looking in my game scene. Uh, yeah, I don't really like the size of that. I might I might scale it back down to like 24. Yeah, that's the size I kind of like for now. Uh, I'm going to line Over here back on the canvas, we're going to add a back panel for it. So canvas, I'm going to create a UI and a panel right here. That's way too big, obviously. Uh, I'm going to name this panel Timer Panel. Alright, let me grab the corners of this. So, it's T on your keyboard. And I'm going to kind of make it fit like roughly up here. So we have like this little subsection here. So we're going to have two um, times up here in the top. The lap time and then we'll have a best time. That will be saved underneath. Um, I'm going to make it fit roughly like that. Um, I don't like the white as much. So I'm going to change that color. I'm going to go with more like a gray. And then the opacity down here, that's okay. I might see what that looks like if I lighten it up. That's a little too opaque. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like that. Now, because it's below uh, lap timer, it's sitting on top. So I'm going to switch that above so that the, the layers look clear inside the hierarchy. Okay. So we're going to add another text object called min, uh, you know, minute display. So on the canvas, <clears throat> UI, text, and we'll call it minute display. And I want to go ahead and give it the time of zero zero 
and then semicolon. Oh, that's not zero. Those are O's. All right. So I set the other one to 24 on the sides. There you go. And let me zoom in some here. Or make sure I grab the whole thing. Kind of make it fit roughly like that. So we're going to have three text objects for each one of these. Uh, well, outside of the name. Uh, the first one is going to be your minutes. Look at that. That looks okay. And then the next one is going to be your... I'm going to duplicate this, so Command D. And call this one Sec Display. The second. And this one, instead of the semicolon at the end, we're just going to do a period. And then finally... Milli, it's a millisecond display. And this last one is just a zero by itself. And I'm going to put this at the end. How's it look in game? Yeah, it's OK. It's not completely balanced. I, I think it's a little more to the left than what I was wanting. So what I'll do is I'll shift click all of these and I'm just going to move them all over just a tad. But when you start putting numbers in, you know, we'll have to play with this some more. It's not like a definitive thing. I'm not a big fan of the font here, uh, but I'm not going to change it. Uh, you guys remember how to do uh, that. Uh, we could probably play with that later on. We might be at the end. It'll be easier just to go back and add that in. So I would just leave it alone uh, for the time being. Um, yeah, size 20 was what I originally went with. All right, I'm going to make all of these a child of timer panel. So I'm going to drag them underneath this so that I can move this whole thing around easily. All right, as a child of timer panel, I'm also going to add a raw image. So UI, raw image. And it just puts in this white square, uh, which is fine for us. Uh, I'm going to just make it a lot thinner. Well, actually, I should go ahead and expand. I'm going to expand this out almost to the edges. And then I'm just going to make it a thin. Oh, can I zoom in some? Maybe it'll give me a little bit more control. Yeah, kind of like a thin line. So, like a divisor line between the top and the bottom part, like that. Feels like I'm a little scrunched up on the top, but we'll see once we get everything in. I went and save once, so Command S. And then I'm going to take Timer Panel and Command D. I don't think I'm going to keep, obviously, the panel itself. Or maybe I could. I don't think it's making a big difference in the way it looks. Let's move these down. that. All right, let me get rid of that raw image. So delete that. That looks okay. Yeah, it, it kind of messes with it. Um, so instead, I'll change lap timer to best lap. Then I'll just put the word best in front of all of these here. Best men display. Best sec display and best melee display. Um, go grab all of them, drag them above timer panel, and then delete that timer panel. Uh, on best lap, change that to best time. That looks a little more scrunched up, so we might have to play with that some. I might just take this object itself and move it over just a tad bit. Uh, 
Yeah, maybe I'll take best lap and just make it a little bit smaller on the size. Let's try like 22. Yeah, I'll try to get off that edge just a tad bit. That looks that looks fine. Move it up. Kind of hard to see all this stuff back around. Yeah, I think that looks good. Have a look, see in the game view. That's workable. I would. I'm once again. I'm thinking I would change the font at some point. Uh, so now that we have this, we need to go ahead and set like a physical uh, trigger across the lap. We're going to need two of them. The first one is going to be right in front of our car. So let me get out of 2D here. Double click on my car. Let's go find it. So we're going to have a starting line right here. We'll put in an object to represent that. And then uh, we're going to have a, a halfway point trigger. So there will be a trigger at the starting line and then a halfway point that our, our players need to cross in order to activate or deactivate it. Turning this one. Okay, so now we are going to make ourselves a lap trigger. So let's go ahead and take our car. We're gonna make our starting line or finishing line or, you know. Okay, let's take a 3D object, cylinder, and I want to place it kind of off to the right of where the player is. Let's move that back up. I think I went like below the ground. Where is zero? Huh. Boom. Not that way. Let's have a look see. Yeah, I'm through the ground. So we're going to st stand this out in just a second. So we're going to make the two poles as, as the starting line. Um, remember, I might be doing mine backwards opposed to the traditional one um, with a right hook first, but it doesn't really matter uh, for what we're doing. <clears throat> I'm going to call this cylinder starting pole. And I'm going to go with this scaling option, and I would prefer if you did the same thing. So not position, but scaling. You're going to go 0.25 on the X to make it kind of small. And then for height, I went with 3. And then 0.25 on the Z, uh, and then drag it up. Let's see what we have here. Option. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh... Let's go ahead and create a new material. So let's create attention. Okay, I have a flag material here, but inside of this, I'm going to go control, create a material. And I will call this uh, metal. And I like to add MAT, matte material, on the end of this. So we talked about albedo before. This is just a general color. I'm just going to maybe go for more like a silver look, kind of grayish. And then turn up that metallic. There you go. Maybe bring up the smoothness as well. It won't be super noticeable here in the scene, but it's a nice touch to have. And I'm going to drag it onto my pole. <coughs> there you go. You can kind of see it uh, here. Uh, I'm going to take that same thing, duplicate it. Command D. Rename that to starting pole 2. And move that one to the opposite side of the track. Since my track is not exactly straight, I need to move it back. And okay, so that's set. That looks okay. Now we need to add in our banner across the top. So add a 3D object and we're going to add in, <coughs> sorry, a plane here. All right. I'm going to call this starting line. Done. I'm going to go ahead and ro rotate it. If you hold down command while you do this kind of stuff, you'll get the snapping options. 
so it snaps. It makes it a little bit easier to kind of control things as you do this. So. Drag this onto it. Now, under this, it adds it to the albedo for you. And under tiling, you can play with this. I mine's already preset to like two and five, so that would be my suggestion for you to get that effect uh, on your starting line. Mine's not perfect, but it's pretty close. It, it works for what I want to do. So there you go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and create. I'm going to save here, create an empty, and I'll call it starting line. And this will just be an object to hold all of my starting line objects like that. So I can parent them in as such. OK. Let's go halfway across our track. So this is where we're at right now. And for me, halfway is just directly across the way, right about here. Somewhere where your players could, they have to come touch that opposite area, so halfway across the way. Uh, so for me, right there, I'm going to try to pan into it. That looks about right to me right here. And I'm going to create a, a cube for a 3D object cube. Where'd you go? Is it all the way back there at start? Well, I'm going to go ahead and name it and then move it back over here. Uh, we'll call it half point trigger. And where is it at? Oh, it's just really like way down there. If I just lift it up, it's like across, it's all the way, like, way across the map. I want to be over here, buddy. I see where we're at now. Let's go down. Right about there. Looks pretty good to me. I'm going to stretch it across the entire area where the player could possibly drive in. So between these mountains, this is where um, you know making your, your track sort of confined will be very helpful. And we are going to go back in and add some colliders. Uh, so let's just kind of cover up this the track, but I'm going to go all the way across this entire thing just to be safe because right, so we want this, this thing to work um, the way intended. So. so I'm just going to stretch it out this way. For me, it's on the Z axis just based on where it's at. Doesn't have to be perfect. but. Uh, I will. I want to rotate mine just a little bit, so it feels a little bit better to me. And I want to make sure that the player isn't able to drive through the mountain or around it via the trees. So, just stretch it out this way. Great. Uh, so this is where we're going to have those two triggers that turn each other on and off. So when you cross the starting line, this one will turn back on, and when you hit this one, it'll turn the other one off. And this is how we're also going to work on enemy pathfinding using this right here. So let's take this object and Command-D, duplicate it, and then move your duplicate back to the starting point, which is going to be kind of over here. Where are we at? Did I go too far? Yeah. All right, let me move it over here to the starting point. And the same thing. Take your this, the duplicate. I'm going to call it starting trigger. right there. Okay, let's go ahead and make a new script. So under scripts, I'm going to make a new C-sharp script called half point trigger. And I'm going to open that up. Alright, I don't need all the boilerplate 
So I don't need to update or start. This is just going to be an on-trigger event. Um, but we do need to think about our variables. So we're going we're gonna to need to look for two triggers. We're going to look and see if the first one works and then the second one uh, so itself. So let's go to public game object. And we'll call the first one um, start trigger. And then the other one public game object path wait trigger. And we're using camel case. So we need to think of an on trigger event. So uh, let's do void on trigger enter. Come on. Sorry, I'm getting messages here messing me up. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this right here, this section here. I don't need to clutter other for what we're looking at. Uh, and simply, if we, whatever this script is on, if anything enters this, we're not going to look for specific names or tags. That's why I got rid of the collider other, other. I will just turn this thing on and the other one off. So start trigger dot set active is true and halfway trigger dot set active is false. There you go. Pretty straightforward. So this is going to go on the halfway point object. So whenever we enter it, it turns the starting one on and turns this one off. So that's saved. Let's go back into Unity. Let it compile. On the halfway point trigger, let's add that script. Let me get rid of some of this material here. Half point trigger. Boom. Got it. It needs to know itself. There's other ways we could have scripted that, like this, you know, object, whatever. But this works totally fine. Uh, and then, since we're doing an on trigger event, we need to make sure our collider is an is trigger event. Um, Let's go ahead and take both of these objects, half point trigger and starting trigger. Let's turn off their mesh renderers. And we don't want our starting trigger to be on when we start the game. We want to have it off. Let's go ahead and set that inactive here in the inspector. So that should mean that when we race around the track, this will turn on. So I'm going to give that a quick uh, uh, run around and see what we get. There it is. So it, it, it happened. Great. That's what we wanted to do. So now it knows that we've gone halfway across the entire um, the map. Uh, let's go ahead and make our lap timer script. So create a new event. I'm sorry, a new C sharp script, and we will call it lap time manager. Open that up, and since okay, so let's go ahead and give it access to Text Mesh Pro because we know we're going to be using those um, UI elements. So TM Pro. All right, we won't need a start method, but we do want to keep the update boilerplate stuff. So let's think about what is going to be in our timer. So it's going to it needs to know the minutes, the seconds, and the milliseconds count. So public. And these are all whole numbers, uh, except for the milliseconds count. So public float. Oops. Uh, sorry. Public static. And sorry. Minute count. Public static. Integer second count. And then this is our millisecond one, so it's public. We're just making it public so we can see it. Um, milli count. 
And then we want to be able to turn the millisecond, since it is a float, into a string, so we can display it. So that'll be a public static string. And I'll call it merely display. All right. Now we also need to do a few. Uh, we need to actually get reference to those objects uh, that are displaying our text. So minute. I'll just call it minute box. Second box. And then finally, public game object, nearly box. Okay, so those are the variables that we need. The actual numbers themselves uh, that are going to be displayed, and then the text objects that are going to be displaying them. So we need to increase the game in time based on in game time, right? We need to keep going up. So it doesn't rely on the computation speed of device. And we know that's called time.delta time. We need to do this every frame. So we're going to say milli count is going up. So it's going to increase every frame based on time.delta time. And since milliseconds is a very small number, we want to go with like, you know, the next sort of step up. We want to we will multiply it by 10. Now, for something like this, I don't have a problem hard coding in the 10 because this is a, a number we're never going to want to change. And let's make sure we display this in the update. So let's go ahead and put it on milli display, make this into a string, is equal to milli count dot two string, capital T, capital S. So this is what's going to turn this into, this number into a string. Uh, some text that they can understand. And there's a bunch of different ways we can, you know, send it to string. Uh, but we're going to do F0. So there's like these shorthand coded numbers, the ways we can represent this. Uh, this is the one we're going to do. So, it's, you know, I, I don't really want to get into this as much, but this is the way to turn in this style of decimal number into a string. So, Finally, let's put this inside of our text mix uh, object. So that's millibox, right? The game object we're going to use. Millibox is equal to, oh, I'm sorry, it's get component, right? We're going to get the text mix object component. Get component, and it's text mesh pro you GUI. So this should be familiar. Open close those parentheses dot text. Oh, outside of that. Dot text. And make that equal to open close uh, quotations. So it leaves a blank plus milli display. This is just so we have a gap at the beginning um, in, in the front part of this. So, so we want it to roll over to 10 every time it reaches 10. Like we don't want it to keep going up, right? We're running around in a spaces. So we need to put in as part of this update, if milli count, if we ever get to 10, right? Because you want to go from 10, then go back, then add one to a seconds. So if it ever it goes greater than or equal to 10, We, we know we always do the greater than just in case it doesn't catch on the equal. It should always do that, but it's like a, it's almost like a safety valve when we're scripting this kind of thing. Um, milli count, is, put it back at zero, and then add second count plus equals one. So that adds a second every time that this reaches 10. All right, so we need to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to keep adding these bits of logic. So we want the seconds to be represented um, as a number with a zero at the front. So it'll be like zero, one, zero, two, because as it increases, we gotta get save a spot for 10. It's a one, zero. So we hard code in the zero. We're gonna put a zero there, and then the decimal at the end is a placeholder. So
let's do if second count. So let's go ahead and add in this line of text. Is ever then uh, the nine second box dot get component get the text mesh pro UV object. dot text, same thing, equals, so the beginning, instead of a blank space, we're going to actually put in the zero, and then add our, oh, sorry, don't need the parentheses there, let me get this back over here, add second count, plus, and at the end, I just want to have that, that single decimal point as a placeholder, so, get component, text zero second count this All right so this ensures once we get to nine uh, it'll roll over and we need to put an else statement for this else second box oops wrong spot I feel like I'm not doing a good job paying attention here let's bring this down okay there you go that looks more like what we used to Second box dot get component text mesh pro you gui dot text let's get this over this so you can see this equals open close parentheses no space plus second count oh keep doing that outside of this And still add that decimal point at the end. So as long as we're less than nine, put a zero in front of it. And if we're above nine, then we're not going to put a zero at the front. We're just going to put the count. That way you have a zero, one, zero, two, zero, two, three, and then you go up from that. That preserves that space. And then finally, we need to do the same thing. Um, on the seconds uh, from the for the minutes, right? So take a space if our second count equals. So when we get above what I mean, you should be able to guess what number do we want to flip over to one? It's gonna be sixty. Now I, I'm hard coding numbers here uh, because these aren't ever gonna change because we know these are these are numbers that are gonna be defined always because this is how time works. I'm okay with that. I normally don't want you to put hard numbers down here. And we could make variables at the top for this. But for the simplicity of our code and because we're never going to change this, let's leave it like this. We'll see 60. Then second count equals zero. So put your seconds back to zero. And set your minute count equal to plus equals to one. Add one every time you reach 60. So we need to add that rollover feature as well. So a that if and else statement like we did right here in second count. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste it. And then we have to go be really intentional to make sure that we change the numbers uh, the way that we, we want to do this. So command V below. If minute count is greater than 9, right? minute box get component dot text and then we want to make sure that it is our minute count and instead of the decimal point we're using the colon minute box dot get component minute count So once again, this builds in the placeholder. As long as we're less than nine minutes, it'll have a zero in the front, which we hope it doesn't take them that long to uh, run this. So yeah, that's your entire script. Zoom out a little bit. Command S to save that and go back into Unity with the compile.
All right. Make sure I save my game too. Amanda has to save that. I'm gonna create a new empty object, and I will call it lap. Um, did I call it lap time manager? I think I did. Lap time manager. Okay. It's an empty object. I'm gonna add in this lap time manager script to hold that there. So I'm gonna to go to my canvas. I'm gonna go back to 2D. This might make it a little bit easier for me. So lap time manager. Uh, so minute box is going to be the minute display. Second box is going to be second display. And then milli box is going to be milli display. All right. So let's watch what happens when we press play. See if we can, our lap time goes up. There you go sort of a hard flicker right now if you have it flicker at 10 like is acting kind of weird go to my melee display so it kind of flickers at 10 you know my solution after looking at it for a little while was to go back into the script here um, to prevent it from flickering whenever it got to uh, 10 so I said if milli count is uh, greater than nine. So I switch this to nine. So it ever goes above nine instead. Still do the same thing here. This stayed the same. And then on my second count, if second count was ever greater or than uh, 59. And it prevented me from rolling up from 10. I liked that more than trying to do it, fixing it um, via the text display box. So save that. And that should clean up our little error right there. All right. So let's press play and see what we get. See, that's a lot better. We're not we're not getting the flickering. I'm inclined to want to move my milli display over. You couldn't notice it earlier that there's like a gap here. Um, I might just try to move this in, see if that helps. Um, let's press play. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. So I think. Um, well, yeah, what we'll go ahead and do is add in a um, another video for the best time display, and that, that'll take us into our next thing, which is a countdown timer for when the game starts. So we'll do both of those together, even though logically it doesn't make sense. Uh, we'll stop here because this video is getting a little long, uh, and I don't want I want to break up these these two parts of it. So the next video is moving lap times down to best time whenever we hit the start trigger and finishing that part out.